Hello and welcome to another AFCB TV preview show. Once again, I'm joined by Chris Temple and it's been another excellent week for the Cherries. We'll be digesting it all right here. Coming up on today's show, we'll be looking back at West Ham United last weekend and a fantastic 2-1 win. We'll also be looking at what happened when we went out and about with Charlie Daniels. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to this weekend's game against Everton as well as next week's Carabao Cup game against MK Dons. Well, Chris, first things first, what a good start it's been to the season. Flying, Bournemouth are going to win the league, it's fantastic. Um, <laughs> yeah, everything's gone well so far. I think, you know, that Marseille performance in pre-season, as we said, it carried into Cardiff, where maybe Bournemouth didn't get the stiffest test they will get this year. I think the test was certainly harder at West Ham, albeit, you know, their fans were all leaving 15 minutes before the end, so that tells you things have gone pretty well. But yeah, the performance there away from home, you know, uh, to come back as well um, towards the end where West Ham were having a, little, a good little spell. Um, yeah, I, th I think everybody's got to be delighted with the way it started. And they've won at home, they've won away. That's such a big confidence boost already for the Cherries. Yeah, there's ticks in a lot of boxes already, as you say. A, a first couple of wins, uh, a clean sheet as well in the first game, and to have won away from home. That, that is a particular statistic that can hang over quite a lot of teams uh, throughout the season. I mean, it was Burnley, wasn't it? It went almost all season without getting a single point away from home. So, uh, yeah, to, to have ticked those boxes, I think, for Eddie Howe, I'm sure he's got a, a whiteboard or a spreadsheet somewhere with a lot of little targets on, uh, and there'll definitely be a, a few of those crossed off already, which is great. And of course, last year it took them till mid-October to get to six points. So already they're, they're in a good position. Well, and there's six teams left with a 100% record. So it's nice to be that one of that elite sort of squad of six at the moment. Obviously, a lot of big guns around Bournemouth uh, at the moment in the table. But yeah, again, that's a motivation factor, a small one, just to say, come on, let's stay in this elite club of 100 percenters for, for at least another, another week. Everton obviously uh, are unbeaten, so there'll be a tough test here tomorrow. But uh, in terms of uh, Bournemouth start, you know, they are right up there among the big boys at the moment. And there are a lot of teams down the bottom who you know Bournemouth are already four or five points ahead of and we know how big four or five points can be that can be that can be five or six places in the table so yep great start and a few people already playing catch up well without further ado let's take a look at all the goals and the highlights from the London Stadium the player of the year for West Ham last year he's got the opportunity to score the first home goal of the season here at the London Stadium and West Ham's first goal of the season Arnautovic against Begovic makes no mistake bottom left hand corner and the Cherries will have to come from behind here West Ham 1 Cherries 2 chance to bring it away Wilson in the centre circle swinging from end to end this Callum Wilson's going to do this all on his own at the moment he's gone past one he's still going he's gone past two Callum Wilson my goodness me what a goal Callum Wilson has started this season on fire back-to-back -back goals and that is one of his best Bournemouth efforts ever past two men slotted it past the goalkeeper and the Cherries back on terms on the hour like a short corner in hockey nearly from Ryan Fraser a short man to take it clipped in in towards the hip here post and it's in a diving header has found the back of the net from Steve Cook he threw himself towards it floated in by Fraser and powered home by Cook and the Cherries have turned this around in the space of about six minutes Well, there you go. Goals from Steve Cook and Callum Wilson ensured the Cherries got off to an excellent start away from home. You can watch the full 90 minutes for free on AFCB TV. 
Now, Chris, there were some brilliant individual performances last weekend, none other than David Brooks. What have you made of his start to his Cherries career? Yeah, I think everyone liked what they saw um, in pre-season. They liked what they saw again against Cardiff uh, for 65 minutes. You know, it was, it was a good start for him against Cardiff. I think last week, um, people started to think, hang on a minute, we're seeing an £11 million player here. And it was interesting, I, I did a little search on Twitter after match of the day, actually. I was interested to see other teams' fans uh, commenting on things. And there was quite a lot of other teams' fans going, this Brooks lad looks like a player. Um, I think the confidence is the one thing that I've noticed with him so far is that he's, you know, we saw him here in the first game run the length of the pitch with the ball, uh, not afraid to take people on. Last week he was having a lot of pot shots. Uh, I think he probably had, I don't know, five or six attempts at goal, a couple of which ended up nearly in the river. But hey, it's, it's the, the confidence to having a go. But he, he really has seemed to add something um, coming off that right hand side onto his left foot. Um, again, it's that the sort of the Matt Ritchie days of old where you've got that those inverted wingers, if you like, the wee man on the left cutting onto his right foot and David Brooks on the right doing the opposite. Um, yeah, he's, I mean, his pass for that Callum Wilson chance in the first half that Wilson unfortunately yeah, so it was a great save by the goalkeeper but Callum I think probably will think he should have scored um, so all in all yeah I mean that was another step up from him and you know he's when Junior Stanislas comes back fit Jordan Ibe is being kept out of the team at the moment so he's got a lot of competition for that spot um, but at the moment he's absolutely making it his own and I think Eddie Howe will be delighted when you spend a lot of money on a young player to for him to have started the way he has I think Eddie will be absolutely thrilled with that. And of course Callum Wilson two goals in two games he looks a man in form, doesn't he? Before we go into that, can I just say, how did he not get a penalty at the end of the game? It was an absolute stone wall. I just had a little chat with him there and he just said, he just said, I just couldn't believe that no one else was really making that much of a fuss of it. And it would have been interesting if Bournemouth had been losing uh, or needing to get something from the game. I think a lot more would have been made of that, but it was absolutely blatant. Anyway, um, yeah, he, you know, from the penalty miss, obviously, in the first game to still find the back of the net. And then last weekend, he missed that chance in the first half and then still came back to score uh, what was just a brilliant goal. I mean, that, if that doesn't make the uh, end of season shortlist for goal of the season that we're watching at the end of the season awards dinner I'll be amazed that was a there was a great uh, still shot someone put again on social media a picture of Callum Wilson and five West Ham players and nobody else in sight inside the West Ham half so yeah um, all in all great for him he's never scored in the I think it's was well, he's three in a row now he's never scored in four games in a row in the Premier League so uh, that will be a nice little nice little memento for him if he can uh, score against Everton and you mentioned about Callum not being awarded a penalty Ryan Fraser could have also been awarded one yeah I think that was yeah, that, that looked a penalty. Uh, there was there was obviously contact. The problem with the wee man is I think one or two people, referees, are probably looking at a couple of incidents where he's gone down a bit easy. I don't know if that's, that's in the back of their mind. Um, I thought the Callum Wilson one was absolutely stonewall. I'd say the Ryan Fraser one was probably 80% a penalty. And I'd say the one that West Ham got was probably... Oof. 30%. I mean, there wasn't a lot of contact, if you ask me, with that one. Um, I didn't think the referee had a great game last week, Stuart Atwell. But again, the wee man, when he's running at pace with people, it doesn't take a lot to knock him off balance. Um, so, yeah, there was definitely contact. And what I would say is that that would have been a free kick anywhere else on the pitch. So that's one of the, uh, the sort of nuances of football that I never understand, the differences between the offences outside the penalty area and inside. But, yeah, the wee man, another one who's absolutely flying at the moment. So let's hope that form continues. Well, another player who was involved last weekend was Charlie Daniels, and this week the AFCB TV cameras went out and about with him. Here's a little look at what went on. And how did you get into golf? Uh through my dad actually. My dad was a keen golfer and every probably once a week we used to go down to the local range and just practice practice and then there was a, a par three course we used to go and we used to play and then that's how I learned how to play and then progress from there really. Mm. And are you willing to divulge what your handicap might be? Uh, it ranges really. I'd say from about eight to ten oh, depending on yeah depending on how much I play. Mm. Yeah, it, it ranges from there. It's and not bad, yeah. So I'll say if, if I practice a bit more, then it probably would be a bit lower. Well, that was Charlie Daniels out on the golf course. You can read that interview in tomorrow's match day programme or watch the full thing on AFCB TV or YouTube next week. Now, Chris, Everton tomorrow, they're going to be a different type of threat, aren't they, to the two teams that Bournemouth have played so far? Yeah, uh, they're a rejuvenator under Marco Silva, who I think will be playing a lot more of the football that Everton fans want to see. I don't think they enjoyed the, the football that Sam Allardyce produced last season. Uh, the one thing about Everton is that the games have always had plenty going on. You know, 
everyone always talks about the 3-3 here, that amazing game. Uh, the win here, obviously, over Everton last season was, uh, was a big one in terms of coming from behind, scoring a late winner, and also launching into a run of great results. You know, Arsenal were turned over here, then Chelsea, obviously, um, uh, as well, which soon followed that one. So that was a nice psychological boost last season. Of course, there's been a couple of games that haven't gone Bournemouth's way. We won't mention the 6-3 away from home. So there's been a lot of entertainment, but I think certainly they're coming up against a different animal this season. Um, you look at, you know, Richarlison, yes, he had a very quiet second half to last season. I don't think he scored for 28 games or something, but obviously he's uh, he's had a great start in the Everton Blue, £40 million as well. You know, we talk about big signings, um, making an impact. He's absolutely done that. Um, you know, you look at someone like Theo Walcott, who's, uh, you know, he's come along, well, actually commentated on his first ever professional goal at Leeds, which was back in 2005 for Southampton. He's, uh, he's come a long way and he's enjoying another one who's, again, probably needed a move just to sort of rejuvenate himself as well. So someone like him, uh, you know, Schneidlin hasn't had a great season last season under Allardyce, but maybe he's going to be a different player this time around as well. And they've actually signed uh, one of Jefferson Lerma's Colombian teammates, Harry Mina, who uh, was in goal scoring form as well at the World Cup. Again, another one who's upwards of 20. 25 million pounds but hasn't played yet so be interesting to see if he turns out here as it will to see if Jefferson Lerma appears again here but yeah I think uh, Everton plays some nice football now um, uh, they're going to be they're going to be tough here that, that'll be the toughest game that Bournemouth had so far certainly. And Marco Silva is obviously coming to Everton what do you make of, of their start to the season? Yeah I mean they, they did well to, to get a point at Wolves obviously the, the carnival of Wolves returned to the Premier League with Everton had 10 men in that game of course Phil Jagielka got sent off so uh, to get a point away there I think they'll you know ultimately be pleased to get something with 10 men and last weekend to beat a Southampton side who by all accounts you know and Cherries fans won't mind hearing Southampton have been bang average so far according to the people that have been watching them so uh, yeah to, to come through that probably they should have come through that a little bit more comfortably than they did um, but you know, Marco Silva, he, he did great things at Hull when he came over, um, did well at Watford and then left obviously in strange circumstances with all sorts of uh, rumours about Everton being sort of uh, linked with him. So he plays nice football. A lot of people, again, reading things from the, the North West, a lot of people saying that Marco Silva players say how much they enjoy working with him and how good he is uh, with them individually and on the training ground. So, yeah, the, the two youngest managers in the Premier League head to head tomorrow. Eddie, of course, is the youngest. Marco Silva is the second youngest. So, yeah, two bright young coaches uh, going head to head and obviously the cherries are are unbeaten in two games as well if you already how would you be looking to make any changes well, it's funny we stood here last week didn't we saying we couldn't really imagine uh, you never quite know what to get from Eddie Howe on his team selection but actually he does stick with winning teams and he is loyal we saw that last week I don't think he'll change I think it'll be the same again um, just lo looking around the squad Jefferson Lerma obviously came through 90 minutes at Brentford as we saw in the under 21 game earlier in the week which uh, Eddie Howe's his quote earlier in the press conference was that his fitness is very good I think he means his sort of cardiovascular fitness maybe his match sharpness is still coming um, so Kenny wouldn't commit as to whether we'll see him we must be getting closer to seeing him but of course with MK Dons looming on Tuesday night I would be uh, amazed if he doesn't start that game so I think probably maybe maybe he'll squeeze onto the bench this weekend Lerma but definitely on Tuesday night um, from from that point of view so I think it'll be same team again and you mentioned MK Dons there on Tuesday night hopefully Jefferson Lerma will make an appearance and, and Diego Rico as well yeah uh, absolutely Rico of course so frustrating for him because he is fit and has been playing in pre-season but it's been suspended because of that uh, sending off in our league at the back end of last season so he'll be as, as much as anybody absolutely chomping at the bit to get involved uh, so yeah you look at the team that Bournemouth can play on Tuesday night if Eddie does go with his usual policy of uh, changing most of the players looks a very strong team you know you've got the likes of Tyro Mings, Jordan Ibe, Lise Mousset, Jermaine Defoe, Mark Pugh, uh, Lewis Cook just to mention a few who haven't got a got a look in so far so MK Dons you know good to see a couple of old faces with Bailey Cargill and Matteo Baudry coming back as well um, but yeah that's going to be a, a strong looking team Tuesday night and I'm almost certain that'll have Rico and Lerma in from the start. And Bailey Cargill, obviously only left in the summer he'll be really looking to make an impression won't he on his first visit back. To the yeah it's, it's one of those for Bailey I think the he was probably a victim of the fact the club has moved fast, so fast forward um, in terms of, you know, he was one of the few academy players, the one of the few they've, Cherries have managed to get through the system in recent years to get close to the first team. He obviously had that memorable debut away at Man United in that, uh, that sort of hard fought draw where he came on as a sub, which was his only solitary Premier League appearance. So for him, he had quite a few loan spells elsewhere, you know, Fleetwood and you think of Partick, he went to Gillingham. So for him now, he's got a club to call home, MK Dons, um, you know, geographically not too far away I mean for a tough old life going up to Partick I can tell you that from Bournemouth but you know for him it's a it's a good level um, and hopefully now he can make an impact he's still young so um, we've we've liked what we've seen of him but 
for him, he was probably just a victim of how fast the club moved. And he's got a left foot, which for a centre-half is a real bonus as well. And you mentioned a couple of weeks ago that you'd like to see the Cherries go on a cup run. This is a good opportunity to get it started at home. Yeah, again, if you're uh, designing cup draws as a Premier League team, a lower league team at home is uh, you know what you'd like. I think back to Preston, though, and I remember that it doesn't always go with the script when that happens. Um, again, talking to Eddie about cup competitions, he... He'll maintain every team he puts out should be good enough to win the ties that they're put out for. And, you know, a Premier League team, even with their second string or some players who haven't been playing, should always be good enough to beat a lower league team. What I will say about MK Dons is a bit like uh, the, the previous couple of teams Bournemouth have played in terms of Pellegrini at West Ham, Marco Silva at Everton. MK Dons have got a new manager as well in Paul Tisdale. Uh, so again, you know, for him, it's a new challenge and a, a team looking to, to make an impact under their new manager. So they'll come here, you know, with... For, for them, it's nothing to lose, but for Bournemouth, you have to look at it as a, a great chance to, to get an earlier foothold in the competition. Well, it's certainly going to be a very busy few days here at Vitality Stadium. That's all we've got time for today, but we look forward to seeing you here tomorrow for the visit of Everton.